Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma's channel. Today's crochet tutorial is for the Sunny Day Shell Afghan. This is a beautiful raised shell pattern made using the Lion Brand Ice Cream Roving Yarn. So let me tell you everything you're going to need to make this afghan today. So here is a close-up of the Sunny Day Shell Afghan. You can see that beautiful texture with those raised shells and how they alternate. Now the bad news I have to tell you is that the Lion Brand Ice Cream Roving Yarn is gone. It's no longer available. This was a limited time yarn. I ordered it anyhow. I started this afghan for myself thinking I could get it done and get it posted and hopefully the yarn would still be available. But this yarn sold extremely fast. It is gone. And that is a shame because I really enjoyed using this yarn. Now I'm going to give you the information about the yarn I use. But I'm also going to show you other yarns that I believe would work perfectly for this afghan. And if you're not sure, then like I tell everybody, only order one skein and make a sample before you really invest in a project this large and then not like the colorway. So let's go over the details. This was a 7 ounce, 200 gram, 437 yards, 400 meters. It's 100% acrylic. It is machine wash and dryable and it's classified as a number four weight yarn. Now, when I was using this yarn, I thought this was just a little bit thicker than a regular four medium weight yarn that I use. Very nice to work with. I had a good time. I love this colorway. But when you're going to substitute the yarn, you need to use the yardage. That is the best way to know that you're going to have enough yarn to do your project. Now this afghan took a little less than 10 skeins, but I had to buy that 10th skein in order to finish it. So I used a little bit of that 10th skein. Now the other thing I want to remind everyone is this afghan is really wide. This is 56 inches wide by 62 inches long. So you can make a really nice size afghan, maybe 45 inches wide and just take 10 inches off the side and still have a really nice afghan so you can use less yarn. So let me go ahead and show you the other yarns because no sense in talking too much about this since it's not available. Now the first yarn that I believe would make a good substitution is the Lion Brand Mandela Ombre. Each color in the Mandela Ombre gradually blends into the other in both tonal and multicolored versions. The printing technique allows for some of the cream yarn base to show through, creating a hand-dyed artisan effect. Mandela Ombre is slightly thicker than the original, spun with multi-plies of premium acrylic, which gives it the look and feel of merino at a fraction of the cost. Now the Mandela yarn is $7.99 a cake. And what I tell everybody is sign up for Lion Brand's newsletters and you'll get emails when they're having the spin to win where you can get discount on yarns. Sometimes they have daily specials. And if you can get those coupons, you can really even save more money. So sign up for that newsletter. Now this is classified as a four medium weight yarn. The yardage on the Mandela Ombre is 344. So about a hundred less yards so you have to kind of figure up the same amount of yardage and again if you make your afghan a smaller size you can use less yarn this is 100 percent acrylic and it is machine wash and dryable now with the mandela ombre they have 12 different colorways now they don't have a blue white and yellow like this but they do have 12 colorways. Now what I'll do is on all these yarns that I'm showing as substitutions, I'll put a link in the description box for these yarns. You can click the link. It'll take you directly to that yarn's web page. You can review the colors. You can click the next link, go review those colors, and really get an idea of what yarns and what colors are available if you want to make this afghan. So that was the first substitution. And again, this comes in 344 yard cakes. So you have to figure out how big you want to make your afghan and then determine how much yarn you're going to need. If you're making it the same size, 
then you're going to need 4,370 yards of yarn to make it the exact same size. So the next yarn that you can substitute and make this afghan is the Premier Puzzle Yarn. Now this is a five bulky weight yarn, but it's not that much thicker than the ice cream roving. And I've used this yarn to make a smaller version of this afghan, but I give the afghan away so I no longer have it to show you. But this yarn works perfectly. It's a wonderful yarn. I've used it in so many of my designs. I absolutely love the Premier Puzzle. Now this skein has 328 yards, so a little over 100 yards difference, so you're getting less yarn in the skein, but the skein is less money. This is only $7.99 a skein. And you need to remember, if you're making your afghan smaller, then you can use less yarn. If you're making it the same size, then you have to make sure you have 4,370 yards of yarn to make this project. So let me tell you a little bit about the yarn. Again, it's 328 yards, 300 meters, 7 ounces, 200 grams. This is a 5 bulky weight yarn. It works perfectly. It's machine wash cold, tumble dry, so machine wash and dryable. It has been tested against over 350 harmful substances. Now this color here is color number 1050-33 double dutch. It's 100% acrylic. I think I already said that. This yarn is made in Turkey. It has a nice feel to it. It's not super soft like, you know, Red Heart Soft, but it's a really beautiful yarn. And what I like about this colorway is it's going to give you the same effect because it has the white, it has contrasting colors that you can see really well. So when you're crocheting up the design, you're going to really see the contrast in the colors. So I just want to show you another color in the premiere. Now this one, I believe it's acrostic. It's color number 1050-09. And the thing that concerned me about a colorway like this is you're not going to get the contrast of the colors. Now, I'm not sure if you would be happy with subtle color changes because the colors are so close. It would have a little bit different look. It would have a softer look. The colors would blend together. You're still going to see the difference in the colorways. It just won't be as high contrast of really seeing different colors. This is more of all the same tonal colors in this one. If you have an extra skein in your stash, go ahead and work up a sample. See if you like it because this is a large project and very expensive to make if you purchase the yarn to find out that you don't like how it works up. So again, that is the second substitute yarn that you could use. Now the next substitute yarn I believe you could use is the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. And the reason I chose this yarn was because of the fact of the different color blues of how they would work up and you would see those subtle changes in the colors. It has enough difference in the colors. I believe it would be absolutely beautiful with the texture and that tonal change. So let me give you the information about the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. Now this comes in a 10 ounce skein. It's 283 grams. It's 482 yards. 440 meters and right here is a lot of yardage in this skein of yarn 482 yards of this yarn so plenty of yardage it's classified as a number four medium weight yarn it's a hundred percent acrylic and it is machine wash and dryable now, when you look on the label, it's telling you to use a size I-9 crochet hook. So let me get that up there, I-9. So the one thing I do suggest if you're using this yarn is to drop your hook size. Now, I used a size 10J for this afghan, but drop your hook size down to an I-9, and you may need to adjust your chain. And I'll give you the multiple of this afghan as soon as I'm done showing the yarns that I think would be beautiful. 
So I just want to show you the photo on the label and thank you Red Heart for putting these photos on the label. It's very nice to see how these yarns work up. And when you're looking at this photo, you can see how those colors gradually change. So you have to envision this color change with this pattern, how pretty that would look with those blues. So I really do recommend if you're using this yarn, it is a little thinner than the other yarn I use so drop that hook size down to the recommended hook size on the label and if you use a different yarn than any of the ones I show here then make sure you're using the recommended hook size on the yarn label for the best results. So again this is nice because this skein has a huge amount of yardage in it 400 and 82 yards. So that is a great value with the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. Now, if you're going to change the size of the afghan, use the stitch multiple of four plus two. So if you're using a substitute yarn, then go ahead and chain four, chain four again, keep chaining in multiples of four, get it to the width you want, and then add two chains. That's the best way to figure out how wide you want your afghan. Now, if you're making your afghan smaller, you can use less yarn. If you want to make a huge king size afghan, then you're going to have to purchase more yarn. Now, because you're using a different yarn to make the afghan, your gauge will change. So the size of the afghan may be a little different. So just pay attention to your starting chain. I would work maybe two or three rows of the pattern and then measure the width and see if that's the width you want and and go from there again multiple of four and then when you get it to the width you want add two more chains so let's go ahead and get this project started to begin our project i already have my yarn attached to my hook and i just used a double knot you can use whichever method you prefer and i'm also using a size 10j or six millimeter hook so let's go ahead and begin you're going to yarn over pull through the loop on your hook and that creates your first chain the loop on your hook does not count as a chain you're going to yarn over pull through that's two three four five continue until you have a chain with 150 chains and i'll be back and we'll start row one i'm back i have my chain with 150 chains and now we're ready to begin row one row one we're going to work a simple single crochet row we're going to skip the first chain you're going to insert into the second chain from hook yarn over pull through the chain you have two loops yarn over pull through two loops you made a single crochet i'll show you one more time insert into the next chain yarn over pull through that chain you have two loops yarn over and pull through two loops so now we're just going to go ahead and work one single crochet in each chain across to the end of your chain single crochet into the next chain single crochet into the next chain you're going to continue and work one single crochet in each chain across and i'll meet you at the end of row one i'm over at the end of row one i just worked my last single crochet into the last chain and this is what your work should look like and when you get to the end of row one, you're going to have a total of 149 crochet stitches across your work. Now, if you're new to crocheting, then I do advise all my new crocheters to go back to the beginning of the row, put a stitch marker right into that first stitch, and then place a stitch marker into the last stitch when you complete the row every time you finish and start a row you're going to move your stitch markers up to the very first and very last stitch of each row so now we're going to start with a chain one and you're going to turn your work we're going to skip our beginning chain one and we're going to work a half double crochet into this very first single crochet stitch to make a half double crochet you're going to yarn over skip the beginning chain one insert under the top two loops of that first single crochet 
yarn over, pull through that stitch. You have three loops, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on your hook. You just made a half double crochet stitch. We're going to skip the next single crochet and work three double crochet into this next stitch. Yarn over, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, and we're going under both of those top two loops. Yarn over, pull through that stitch. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops only. Yarn over and pull through two loops. That's how you make a double crochet. Now we need to make two more double crochet into that same stitch. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, work a double crochet. Double crochet back into that same stitch. You're going to have a total of three double crochet all into that same stitch. Now we're going to begin our repeat. So if you need help, just click back to the video where I say this is the start of the repeat, work until I say this is the end of the repeat, and you're going to repeat that across to the last two single crochet stitches. So let's go ahead and start our repeat. We're going to skip the next single crochet. We're going to double crochet into this next stitch. We're going to yarn over. We're going to skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, and we're going to work three double crochet. There's one. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a second double crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work your third double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's go ahead and work that repeat a couple more times together and then you can continue on your own. We're going to begin and we're going to skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. Skip the next stitch and work three double crochet into this next stitch. That's one. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work your second double crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work your third double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's go ahead and do the repeat again. We're going to skip the next stitch, work a double crochet into the next stitch. Skip the next stitch and work three double crochet into that next stitch. There's one. Two insert back into that same stitch and work your third double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's do it one more time. Skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. Skip the next stitch, work three double crochet into this next stitch. One, Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work your second double crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that stitch, work your third double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and continue. You're going to skip the next stitch, work one double crochet into the next stitch, skip the next stitch, and work three double crochet into the next stitch and you can see how the pattern is forming. If you need additional help, just click back on the video. I'll meet you at the end of row two at the last two stitches. I'm over at the end of row two. When you finished your last repeat, you're going to have two stitches remaining. So to end row two, we're going to skip this next stitch and we're going to end the row with a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into that very last stitch, go on under both of those top two loops. Yarn over, pull through, you have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. 
So row two is finished. Now row one and row two will be your base rows and then your repeat rows will be row three to row six. So let's go ahead and begin row three. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert under the top two loops of that very first stitch, work a single crochet. We're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row. Insert into the next stitch. Again, make sure you're going under both of those top two loops. Work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row three. I'm over at the end of row three. I have one stitch remaining and if you're new to crocheting you should have a stitch marker in the first and last stitch of every row and you should be moving them up as you're crocheting. Insert under the top two loops of that last stitch, work a single crochet. Row three is finished. This is what it looks like so far. And your coloration might be different. It all depends on where you started with the color on the skein. Now it's time to begin row four. We're going to begin with the chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip this beginning chain one and we're going to work a half double crochet and a double crochet into this first single crochet stitch. Yarn over, skip the beginning chain one, insert under the top two loops of that first single crochet, work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. So again, you worked a half double crochet and a double crochet into that first single crochet stitch. We're going to skip the next single crochet and we're going to work a double crochet into this next stitch. So now we're ready to begin the repeat. We're going to skip the next stitch and then we're going to work three front post triple around the double crochet below the next stitch. That's that double crochet two rows below, one, two, that stands by itself. And when you work a front post triple, you're going through the front of your work to the back, and then you're taking your hook from the back back to the front underneath this stitch and then you're going to work your three triple crochet. So a front post triple, don't let that scare you, it's just telling you the front post means you're working your three triple around the front post of this stitch. So let's go ahead and begin. You're going to yarn over twice. Again, you're going to skip that next single crochet, go to the next single crochet, drop down two rows, one, Two, insert from front to back, back to front around the post of that double crochet, and then you're going to work your triple crochet. Yarn over, bring that hook back through the post and underneath the post of that stitch and up. You're going to have four loops. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. That's how you do a front post triple. So we're going to do that two more times around the post of that same stitch. Yarn over twice, drop your hook down below that stitch you just made, insert from front to back, back to front, yarn over, pull underneath and around the post of that stitch. You have four loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. You just made your second front post triple. So now we need to do it one more time. You're going to yarn over twice, drop down to that same stitch and you're going under the last stitch worked, insert from front to back, back to front around the post of that stitch, yarn over, pull back through and underneath and around the post. You have four loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. 
So your three front posts triple are made all around the post of that same double crochet stitch. So now we're going to skip the next single crochet. So my best advice is when you're working this pattern is remember that here is the double crochet you worked. Then we work three front post triple. So you want to have three unworked stitches. So this is the next stitch that you're going to skip. So you're going to have one, two, three stitches behind that will be unworked. And then we're going to work a double crochet into this next stitch. So yarn over, insert into that next stitch, work a double crochet. And if you're not sure after you make that double crochet, just peek behind your work, look behind your front post triples and make sure there's one, two, three unworked stitches. And then your double crochet is worked into that next stitch. So that is the end of the repeat. So I'm going to do it a couple times with you. So let's go ahead and start again. We're going to skip the next stitch and then we're going to work our three front post triple below the next stitch into the double crochet two rows below. So yarn over twice. You skip the one stitch. You go to the next stitch, drop down two rows, one, two, insert from front to back, back to front around the post of that stitch, and we're going to work three front post triple crochet. There's one, yarn over twice, drop down to that same stitch, we're going from front to back, back to front, around the post of that stitch, underneath the previous stitch we just made, work your front post triple crochet. That's two, and we need to do one more. Yarn over twice, drop back down to that same stitch, insert from front to back, back to front, work your front post triple. You're going to skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next stitch. And that is the end of the repeat. And you want to make sure that you're in the correct stitch. Then you can just turn your work, make sure you have three unworked stitches, or if you look at the three double crochet here, you should be in the center stitch. If you look at that center stitch and follow it up, that's where your double crochet stitch should be. So let's do the repeat again. We're going to skip the next stitch. You're going to go to the next stitch, drop down two rows, one, two, to that double crochet that stands alone, and we're going to work three front post triple around the post of this stitch. Yarn over twice, drop down to that double crochet two rows below, insert from front to back, back to front around the post of the stitch, and work three front post triple crochet. There's one, yarn over twice, drop back down to that same stitch underneath the front post triple you just made, insert from front to back, back to front, work a front post triple. That's two. So we need to do that one more time. Yarn over twice, drop back down to that same stitch, insert from front to back, back to front, underneath the previous stitch, Yarn over, pull back through around the post of that stitch, work your front post triple. You're going to skip the next stitch and work a double crochet into the next stitch. And that is the end of the repeat. Again, you can Take your work, look behind those stitches. You should have three unworked stitches. And when you worked your double crochet, again, if you follow it down, it will be in the center of that three double crochet group. If you follow it up, your stitch should be right in the center, matching it and aligning up with that center stitch. So go ahead and continue. You're going to skip this next stitch. You're going to go to the next stitch 
drop down, you're going to work three front posts triple around the post of this double crochet two rows below. You're going to skip this next stitch and work a double crochet into the next stitch. And then if you follow it down, you're going to see that double crochet is right above the center double crochet two rows below. So if you need help, just click back on the video, repeat that across, and you're going to work across to the last two stitches, and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of row four. I just finished my last repeat, and you should have two stitches remaining. So to end the row, we're going to skip the next single crochet, and we're going to work one double crochet and one half double crochet into this last stitch. So let's go ahead and finish the row. Again, we're going to skip this next single crochet. You're going to double crochet into that last stitch. Make sure you go under both of those top two loops. Work a double crochet. Now we're going to finish by working a half double crochet into that same very last stitch. So row four is finished. This is what your work should look like. You can see that beautiful texture forming on your afghan. So now let's begin row five. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip the beginning chain one. You're going to insert under the top two loops of that first stitch, work a single crochet. We're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row. So very easy row for this row. Insert into the next stitch. Again, we're always going under the top two loops, work a single crochet single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the end of row five. I'm over at the end of row five. I have one stitch remaining and if you're using stitch markers you should have a stitch marker in this last stitch. Insert under the top two loops of the last stitch. Work a single crochet. So row five is finished. Again you're on the wrong side of your work. This is what it looks like. And now we're ready to begin row six. For row six we're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. Now before we begin row six, it's done in the same manner doing the three triple in that double crochet two rows below in between the previous clusters. And then we're going to double crochet into that single crochet above that center stitch. So the concept of the pattern is the same. It's just we're going right in between and making our clusters in between the previous clusters. So I'm not going to go into detail of how to do the front post triples because I really went into detail with this row. I'm just going to tell you what to do and do the stitches instead of getting into so much detail. So let's go ahead and begin row six. We're going to skip the beginning chain one and work a half double crochet into the top of that first single crochet stitch. And then if you're using stitch markers, go ahead and put your stitch marker in the top of that stitch. You're going to skip the next single crochet, go to the next single crochet, and you're going to drop down two rows, one, Two, and you're going to see that double crochet that's all by itself. You have a space on each side and this is where we're going to work our three front post triple. So yarn over twice, drop down two rows, insert from front to back, back to front around that double crochet and work three front post triple. There's one. and three. 
Now we're ready to start our repeat. So again, this is where you're going to click back on the video if you need help. You're going to start where I say this is the start of the repeat, work until I say this is the end of the repeat, and you're going to repeat that pattern across to the last two stitches. So let's go ahead and do the repeat. We're going to skip this next single crochet and you're going to double crochet into this next stitch. So when you look at your work, you're going to look on the back and you're going to have three unworked stitches, one, two, and three. And when you look at the double crochet you made, it should line up with the center stitch of that three triple crochet cluster below. So always make sure that double crochet is aligned with that center stitch below. We're going to skip the next single crochet. You're going to the next single crochet. You're going to drop down two rows one, two, here's your double crochet standing by itself, and we're going to work three front post triple around the post of this stitch. Insert from front to back, back to front, underneath the post of that stitch, work your front post triple. We need to do that two more times. one to go and three and that is the end of the repeat and again you can see how our three front post triple are right in between the clusters below so let's go ahead and do the repeat a couple more times together you're going to skip this next single crochet you're going to double crochet into the next single crochet. And remember, it's the single crochet above that center stitch. Double crochet into that single crochet. Skip the next single crochet. Go to the next single crochet. You're going to drop down two rows. One, two. Here's your double crochet standing alone. We're going to work three front post triple around the post of this stitch. That's one. two, and three. And that is the end of the repeat. And again, you can see how your clusters are in between the previous clusters below. And that is how you alternate the pattern. So let's go ahead and do it again. You're going to skip the next single crochet you're going to double crochet into the next single crochet. You can turn your work and see that you're going to have three unworked stitches behind that cluster, and then your double crochet is going to be aligned with the center front post triple below. You're going to skip the next single crochet, go to the next single crochet, drop down two rows, one, two, your double crochet standing alone. We're going to work three front post triple around the post of this stitch. That's one. Two. and three, and that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and continue. If you need help, just click back on the video. Again, you're going to skip the next single crochet, double crochet into the next single crochet, skip the next single crochet, 
Go to the next single crochet, drop down two rows, one, two, and work three front post triple around the post of this double crochet. Repeat that across to the last two stitches and I'll meet you at the end of row six. I'm over at the end of row six. I just done my last repeat and when you look at your work you're going to have two stitches remaining. We're going to skip that next single crochet and we're going to end the row with a half double crochet into that very last stitch. Row six is finished. This is what your afghan looks like so far. And row six is the end of the repeat rows. So to continue working on your pattern, you're going to click back on the video and you're going to repeat row three through row six for the pattern. You're going to continue until you have a total of 100 and 37 rows and when you get to the end of row 137 you're ending on row 5 of those repeat rows so again repeat rows 3 through 6 until you have a total of 137 rows you're ending on row five of the repeat pattern. So go ahead and continue working on your afghan and I'll meet you at the end of row 137. I'm over at the end of row 137. This afghan is extremely large, so I'm having a hard time getting it on the table. But when you get to the end of row 137, we're ending on the single crochet row, and you're ending on the wrong side. So again, I just worked my last row, row 137, the single crochet row on the wrong side. This is what the wrong side of your afghan is going to look like. So this is the end of row 137 on the wrong side. Turn your afghan over to the right side. So because this afghan is so large, I'm only putting one round of border. I'm going to put a simple double crochet border around the entire afghan. So let's go ahead and begin round one of our border. You're going to begin with the chain three, one, two, and three. And this beginning chain three will count as the first double crochet of the round you're going to double crochet into the next stitch and go under both of those top two loops of the stitch double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into the next stitch and you're just going to continue working one double crochet in each stitch across the top of the afghan until you get to the next corner. So go ahead and continue, work one double crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the next corner. I'm over at the corner, we just worked one double crochet in each stitch across to the corner we worked a double crochet into that very last stitch and this is what the top of your afghan should look like now again you may have a different color depending on where you are in the skein so now we're going to go ahead and chain two for the corner and then we're going to start working down the length we're going to begin working down the length by working one double crochet in each row and stitch down to the next corner. So when you look at your work, you worked your last double crochet across the top in the top of that last stitch, and now we want to go right into the row and stitch of this very first row going down the length. So we're going to work a double crochet into that same space. Yarn over, insert into that same space you worked your last stitch, work a double crochet and this is working in the first row and stitch down the length. You're going to double crochet right underneath the post of that stitch, right on the edge of the afghan, go under the post of the stitch, work a double crochet. 
next you're going to have your single crochet row it's a little bit harder to see if you're new to crocheting but you can see those single crochets right here follow them down to the end of the row work a double crochet into that single crochet row next you're going to be back to your half double crochet row so double crochet into the end stitch underneath and around the post of that half double crochet row end stitch and you're just going to repeat working one double crochet in each row end stitch down the length until you get to your next corner so go ahead and continue and work one double crochet in each row end stitch down your length until you get to the next corner and I'll meet you there. I just worked down the length of our afghan. We put one double crochet in each row and stitch down your length. This is what it looks like. Now I have one row remaining. So when you look at your work, you're going to have one row remaining. You have a single crochet row right at the bottom edge of your afghan. So we're going to work one double crochet right into that last row end stitch. You're going to chain two for the corner. So now we're getting ready to work across the bottom of our afghan and we're going to be working in the top of each chain across and working one double crochet in each stitch. So yarn over, insert into that very first chain going across the bottom of the foundation row, work a double crochet. Now my stitches are a little tight down here on this foundation row, double crochet into the next chain. Double crochet into the next chain. double crochet into the next chain and you're going to continue and work one double crochet in each chain across to the next corner and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner. I just worked across the bottom of my afghan. Again, this is what your work should look like and your colors may be different again because of where you are on the skein of yarn. So we have one side remaining on our afghan. We're going to chain two for the corner. And now we're going to begin working down the length. This side we're going to work exactly as we did the other side. We're going to put one double crochet in each row end stitch down the length to the next corner. You're going to double crochet into that first row end stitch. So just follow that single crochet row down to the very end stitch work a double crochet. Double crochet into the next half double crochet row end stitch. Double crochet into the next single crochet row end stitch and again if you're not sure look for the single crochet follow it down to the end of the row work your double crochet. Double crochet into the next half double crochet row end stitch. Double crochet into your next single crochet row end stitch. Continue and work one double crochet in each row end stitch down to your next corner and I'll meet you at the end of round one. I just worked down my length. We just worked down the last side of our afghan. This is what our border looks like. And I worked a double crochet into the last row end stitch. And then when you look at your work, this is your beginning chain three. So we still have to make our corner. So we're going to go ahead and chain two. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch. You're going to count up to the top of that beginning chain three. One, two, three. Insert your hook into the top of that chain three and slip stitch. 
Now because the afghan is really large, I only put one round of border on the afghan. Now I think one round of border is sufficient. I, it's up to you if you want to add more border, but you may need more yarn. But the focal point should be on the raised shell stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and fasten off my work. I'm going to weave in my ends and then I'll be back and I'll show you the finished afghan so you can see the whole entire afghan. Our afghan is finished. This is what the final afghan looks like. I want to thank everybody for stopping by and crocheting with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the crochet fun here at Creative Grandma's channel. So until next time, Stay inspired and happy crocheting everyone.